Welcome to Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia, now the fifth largest on campus stadium in the entire country. Saturday afternoon, over 92,000 fans will pack this stadium to watch the Georgia Bulldogs and Georgia Southern Eagles kick off the college football season. Expectations run high for both of these programs this year, but none more than here at Sanford Stadium where the Georgia Bulldogs are expected to compete for their first national championship in 24 years. Winning a national championship takes more than just talent. It also involves a lot of good luck. The Georgia Bulldogs have the talent, and they also have home field advantage for five of their first six games, which includes showdowns against LSU and Tennessee. Hope we take advantage of that. Um, we've been fortunate to win all the home games the last two years. If we can do that again, it'd be a huge lick for our program, um, and it would gain a lot of momentum for us. That's one of our mottos is, uh, you know, to, to always win at home. Never let anybody come in your house and beat you on your own turf. And, you know, we take a lot of pride in winning home games, and, um, and that's something we take very serious. All of Georgia's opponents know what they're up against this year. Senior quarterback David Green is a Heisman Trophy candidate, and senior defensive end David Pollock is one of the best defensive players in the country. I don't know if they're superstars <laughs> or not. People have written a lot about them. Uh, they've been around a while. They've been producing... Uh, for you know, going into four seasons now, so I think that's why they get a lot of attention. But their leadership's been great. They they work hard and uh, they're um, paving the way for the rest of the team to show them how to how to practice here at Georgia and how to how to play. So hopefully, um, it'll rub off. Despite the talent of David Green, Coach Rick plans to get DJ Shockley prepared to start next year. You know, I want him to play a good bit and. Uh, I think he's at the point of his career where uh, he can really make some great strides, but he's got to be in the games to do it, and hopefully he'll be able to stay healthy this year. No, DJ, he's my roommate, so, you know, I got to say something good about him. He's a good quarterback also. You know, we got two good quarterbacks um, at the University of Georgia, and, you know, David Green, this is last year, and this is my last year. We're just trying to go out on top and just have a good season. The one thing that could keep Georgia from having a great season is lack of experience at running back. True freshman Danny Ware will start the season as Georgia's starting tailback. I don't know how he's going to do once we get closer to playing the, the game and all the pressure of that. I don't know how he'll handle that, but right now uh, I've been real pleased with how he's been practicing. The dogs have also been practicing patience. The fans and media are talking BCS, but the team seems to only be worried about Georgia Southern right now. Because we're going to be out of a BCS bowl if we lose the first game, so we got to concentrate on, on Georgia Southern and because they do a little you know, different stuff with the option. We have to pay more attention to what we're doing and stuff. So, you know, it's not hard to, and they're, they're a good team. You know, the hype is there. You know, we just got to take care of business, play one game at a time, and everything else take care of itself. If you're not ready every week, you're going, you, you're setting yourself up to get beat. Because there's not a team on, we feel like on our schedule, uh, that we can come out and just go through the motions and win. You know, everybody, there's, there's not a, there's not a whole lot of difference in, uh, in all the teams we play. So we're, you know, we know we got to be ready for everybody. Saturday afternoon, the Georgia Southern Eagles will run out of this tunnel right here for the first time in four years. The last time Georgia Southern was between the hedges back in the 2000 season, they lost to Quincy Carter and the Bulldogs 29-7. In Statesboro, the window of opportunity still seems to be open for the Eagles to make another run at a national championship. The majority of players who played in the 2002 1AA semifinal game returned for their senior season. Last year was a dying year for us. I mean, I was banged up, had a lot of injuries, but as of now, I've been working hard this summer. I tweaked my hamstrings just a little bit this summer, but, you know, that's fine. I went through camp, lucky with no injuries, so that's a good sign to start off the season healthy. You know, it's always good to go into the first game healthy, and it's one of those things where everybody's working hard, and everybody's pretty much healthy, so we just go out and give my best shot. Last year, you know, we came off the, the loss, so once January came, we just – you know, just break this hard from January until now. And um, I think a lot, all of us is prepared now, so I think we'll be ready. The biggest change this year is on defense. Joe Tracy, the former defensive coordinator at the University of Akron, replaces Rusty Russell. Coach Tracy's philosophy is a high-energy defense that will attempt to create more turnovers. Last year, Georgia Southern's defense only recovered five fumbles compared to the 15 they lost. Everybody's excited. We're running around having a lot more fun and, uh, 
you know, we get to do a lot of different things, uh, bring a little bit of everybody out to secondary and bring a, blitzing a lot of linebackers. Uh, you know, it's going to be a good experience for us, and we're just, we're just having a lot of fun with it right now. On offense, the Eagles should be in their best shape since the departure of Adrian Peterson. The Eagles have a senior quarterback in Chaz Williams, the conference player of the year at fullback in Jermaine Austin, and a lot of depth at slot back with redshirt freshman Lenon Jefferson from Effingham and next year's projected starting quarterback Darius Smiley backing up starters Kevin Davis and TJ Anderson. They got a lot of speed and they're pushing for playing time, but you know they got to get the system down and learn the offensive plays and quit making mistakes and hopefully they can uh, give me and Kevin a blow you know, in the fourth quarter or something like that. There's also something about playing the University of Georgia the Eagles like. The last time they kicked off the season between the hedges, they finished the season as 1AA national champions. He gave us an opportunity to do some good things and we re rebounded well from that and you know the health thing is going to be a big kick because they, they, they are an intimidating football team on both sides of the ball so uh, we just have to go up there and match them, see how well we match up. Though. Welcome back to Sanford Stadium where on Saturday afternoon Georgia senior quarterback David Green and Georgia Southern senior slot back TJ Anderson will meet on the field for the first time since they were teammates at South Gwinnett High School. Five years ago, two longtime friends took off in different directions. Saturday, their football careers will come full circle when they play on the same field for the final time. I've known David for a long time. We grew up playing rec league ball together. I know him since kindergarten, and we're coming up all through rec league together and all, all through high school. You know, he was always a quarterback. I was always a running back. My first game here at Georgia, my redshirt year, and TJ's redshirt year, Georgia Southern played Georgia at you know in Sanford State, and that was our first game here, and it's going to be our last. Well, I guess the last opening game, um, you know, we're both seniors, so, you know, we're both, you know, hoping to have a big year and, uh, you know, be leaders for our teams. At South Gwinnett High School, Green and Anderson were also co-captains their senior year. They turned an 0-10 team their sophomore season into back-to-back -back playoff appearances their junior and senior years. You know, TJ was one of the, he was probably the best athlete on team, and I think he ended up having like 1,400 yards rushing and they had like seven, 800 yards receiving. He was my... Him and uh, this guy named Adam Wilhite were my go-to receivers. We, you know, one play we'd run the ball with him. Next, next play we'd line TJ up out wide, and, you know, throw the ball to him. So uh, he, he's a he's a he's a great talent. In high school, you know, we kind of made each other look good. You know, I always can count on him to make the right decisions in the right plays, and he knew whenever in a jam that he can go to me, you know, in a, whether a pass route or a running play, and I get the job done. So. We just we both just complement each other real well. Saturday, the longtime friends hope they get the chance to shake hands at midfield for one final time before the opening coin toss. We'll be smiling, and you know, because I always hope the best for TJ, no matter what it is. You know, it. You know, we're out there. Um, you know, we're out there. We're competing versus each other, but you know, we're still friends. I mean, when we're out there, you know, you you want to win. You want to beat the other guys, and you know, we know that. We won't beat Southern. Southern wants to beat us. Uh, but then after the game, you know, we're still friends. And I just wish him good luck. You know, play, play a good game, which I know he will, and uh, just make the best team win. Georgia head coach Mark Richt and Georgia Southern head coach Mike Seawalk don't know each other as well as TJ and David do, but they have spent some time together. Here's a look at the two head coaches who both won national championships as offensive coordinators. The only thing that hasn't changed since Georgia Southern last met Georgia is the Eagles offense. When the teams meet for the third time on Saturday, they'll be led by different coaches for the third time. I, I really like Mike. I think he's a good man. I think he uh, really uh, um, is putting together a, a fine uh, team. And uh, from what I hear, they're, they're going to do, uh, they feel like they're as good as they've been in, in the last few years. And I think that he runs a very good program. I like the people he has surrounds himself with. I mean. Not only just the coaches, but the administrators and all, all those people in that organization uh, seem to really be a, uh, focused on what, what needs to be done at the, to elevate Georgia to the national status that it's at right now. Two years ago, when Coach Seawalk was named the head coach at Georgia Southern, he went to Athens to meet with Coach Rick, who was hired at Georgia just the year before. And I went up there and visited with him, tried to get some of his idea on really about three pages worth of uh, questions I had, and he, you know, very open to every question, gave me his ideas and philosophy on pretty much everything. We talk more philosophy about, you know, how to uh, handle things other than football. There's a lot of stuff that I've incorporated in our program from what he does. And then uh, the following year I went up and visited with him again just to, just to 
just to talk with him, see, hey, this is what I'd like to do, and you know, hey, how you doing with this? Mm -hmm. And I, I talked to him this summer. I said, you know, I'd like to come and see you again, but I guess this is going to have to wait one year, and he, he kind of agreed. There's another thing both coaches also agree on. Winning a national championship as a head coach would be a lot sweeter. Yeah, it'd be nice, and uh, I guess it's possible for both of us to do that. When we return to Sanford Stadium, we'll take a look at a couple Georgia and Georgia Southern running backs who are trying to follow in the footsteps of some legends.